I'm super excited because today we're going to be talking about very common aspects that you're going to need to know when it comes to the ATITs. Yes, we're going to be focusing on human anatomy and physiology, and we're going to be discussing general orientation of human anatomy. Let's get started. To begin, we're going to start by recognizing common anatomical terms that you're going to need to know for your tests. Starting with the terms for our head, we have cephalic, which stands for our head, cranial, which is our skull, facial for our face, frontal for our forehead, temporal for our temple, orbital or ocular for our eye, optic for our ear, buccal for our cheek, nasal for our nose, oral for our mouth, and mental for our chin. Moving down from our neck to our abdomen, we have cervical for our neck, axillary for our armpits, brachial for our arm, antibrachial, which is our forearm, carpal for our wrist, palmar for our palm, polex for our thumb, or digital or phalange, they're used interchangeably for our fingers. We have sternal for the breastbone, thoracic for our chest, mammary for our breast, abdominal for our abdomen, and umbilical for our navel. And then lastly, for our anterior view, we're gonna move from our hips all the way down. So we have coxa for our hip, femoral for our thigh, patella, which is the front of our knee, cural, which is our shin, pedial for our foot, tarsal for our ankle, digital of phalange actually stands for our toes, dorsum really means the top of or the back of. So you can have the dorsum of your foot or you can have the dorsum of your hands. Hallux, which stands for our great toe. And just like I said, dorsum, which stands for the back of our hand. So they're gonna be used interchangeably. Make sure you recognize that the dorsum can be the back of your hand and it can be the top of your foot. We have manual, which stands for our hand, pelvic for our pelvis, inguinal for our groin, and pubic for our pubis. Now that we covered everything on the interior side, we wanna cover everything on the posterior side, which is just a fancy way of saying our back. So starting at the top, we have the occipital, which is the base of our skull, acromial, which is our shoulder, scapular, which is our shoulder blade, vertebral, which is the spinal column, dorsal, which is our back, olecranial or cubital, which is the back of our elbow. We have lumbar for our loin, we have sacral between our hips, cosageal, which is our tailbone, gluteal, which is our buttocks, perineal, which is that area between our anus and our external genitalia. We have popliteal, which is the backside of our knee, sural, which is our calf, plantar, which is the sole of our foot, and cacaneal, which is our heel. Next up, we're gonna look at the different kind of planes you're gonna to need to know for the test. So what I want you to imagine as you take a look at these pictures is either you are stuck inside the wall or you're leaning up against the wall, right? So when we're leaning against the wall, we're stuck inside the wall, we're only gonna be able to move in certain directions. We're not gonna be able to come out of the wall, right? We're just gonna be able to move alongside it. Make sure you understand this concept because it's gonna be really important for you to understand when it comes to movement with these planes. Starting with our transverse plane. The transverse plane is a horizontal plane. What it's going to do is it's going to divide our body into our upper, which is our superior parts, and our lower, which is our inferior parts. So when we talk about movements in the transverse plane, we're talking about rotational or twisting movements only on the body's vertical axis. So as you can see here in this picture, it looks like your arms and half of your body is kind of stuck in this wall, right? So the only thing that we're going to be able to do is twist and turn. I'm not going to be able to move my arms, right? Because they're stuck in the wall. And I'm not going to be able to move at my waist to bend forward or backwards. So the only thing that I'm going to be able to do is to twist and turn. Next up, we have the frontal plane. It's also known as the corneal plane. So they are used interchangeably when it comes to the ATITs. What this plane does is it actually separates our body from our posterior, which is our back, and our anterior, which is the front. So movements when it comes to the frontal plane are going to involve motions like side to side, away from and towards the midline. So we have abduction, which means we're moving away from the midline. And we have adduction, which means we're moving back towards the midline. You also have the ability to raise your arms or your legs out to your side, exemplifying the movements within this frontal plane. And then last up, we have our sagittal or lateral plane. Again, they're used interchangeably on the T's. And this particular plane divides us in half, but at this time, we're looking at our left side and our right side. Movements within the sagittal plane are those that occur with forward and backward, right? So flexion would be bending 
An extension would be straightening. That's the typical movements that you're gonna see in the sagittal plane. And lastly, the T's loves to test you on anatomical positions of different body parts. So we're gonna be using terms like anterior, posterior, medial, lateral. So let's break each one of these down. So starting with anterior, this is the front or forward facing side of the body. So if you are facing an individual and that individual is also facing you as well, it's everything that you're going to see on the front. So a good way to remember this is just everything that's in the front, everything else is more posterior. So if you think about it, a common example of this could be the nose is anterior to the ear. And then next up we have posterior, which is the complete opposite of our anterior. This is the back or rear side of the body. So if somebody had their back turned to you and you were looking at their back side, you're technically looking at their posterior side. So we could say that the spine is posterior to the chest. And next up we have medial. And what medial means is it's structures that are closer to the midline of our body. So that's like our sternum bone, right? Everything that's really close to our midline. So we could say that the nose is more medial than our eyes. And you guess that the opposite of medial is lateral. So lateral structures mean that they're further away from the midline of the body. So we're talking about lateral, we could say that the ears are lateral to the eyes. And just like we talked about before with our transverse plane, we have superior and inferior. Superior means that the position is gonna be happening above or higher than another body part. So our eyes are superior to our mouth. And when it comes to inferior, we're talking about the position being below or lower than another body part. So we could say that the mouth is inferior to the eyes. And lastly, we have proximal versus distal. So proximal refers to the point of attachment to the limb to the body. Proximal means closer. So anything that attaches to the central portion of our body, whether it's our femur, our humerus that's in our arms, right? They're gonna be more proximal because they're directly attaching to the body. So in this case, we could say the shoulder is proximal to our elbow. And when we talk about distal, we're talking about things being further away from the body, right? It's not directly at the attachment point, it's much further on down the line. So we could say that the fingers are distal to our wrist. That is everything that you're gonna to need to know when it comes to general orientation of human anatomy. As always, if you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com. There's a ton of additional resources that will help you ace those ATIT's exams. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye.